to the IFF TV podcast. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV, it's the squad reaction with myself Paul Nealon joined by the one and only Gary Spain, how are you Gary? All good Paul, yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose it's uh, new beginnings in some ways but at the same time it is the end of the season so you can understand why a couple of players aren't in the squad but I'll pull up the squad and maybe we'll go through uh, the positions firstly and then uh, we'll kind of come to, you know, players and stuff like that as uh, as we go through it so we'll start off with the goalkeepers uh darren randolph obviously there um Quivy and kelleher back from injury back in the liverpool squad hasn't played um for a while but still in the squad and then gavin bazunu who obviously was the last goalkeeper that played in goals for us against um qatar and against luxembourg so surprised by the goalkeeper inclusions i know there's no mark travers in there maybe a little bit harsh but uh yeah, I, I don't think he's played much, too much either. And if he has, it's been kind of like the Hampshire Cup final where he scored. Um, but it's not really a you know a high-profile game or anything like that. Yeah, no, I mean, if, if he's going to bring three goalies, Paul, I think, uh, and everyone is fit and available, I think they're going to be his three. I mean, Darren Randolph has consistently been the number one. Um, Gavin Bazunu was his first choice in March. And... Uh, Cuevin Kelleher is doing really, really well at Liverpool, and I suspect he would have started the games in March uh, had he been available. So I think uh, it's maybe a little tough on Mark Travers. I imagine he's next in line, but I think they're going to be the three goalkeepers going forward unless something changes. Yeah, no, I would agree. Um, I just think that if, if you know... People, some people earlier in the comments and stuff like that on Instagram had been saying, you know, no Kieran O'Hara and stuff like that. I, I genuinely believe that the three that have been chosen are the best three available. And obviously, Darren Randolph now, he's after getting into Europe with West Ham. Will that see him get more games? You'd like to think so. Um, You know, if he does well in this international window as well. Depends on now whether he, he'll start any of the games. You know, is he going to be there just to be you know, helping the lads out or will he actually play the game? So it's going to be an interesting kind of, I suppose, couple of games. Yeah, I don't know. I Okay, I don't think he's going to start. and But I wouldn't read too much into the fact if he does, if he doesn't start. Because it is, I think it's an ideal chance to give Cuevin Kelleher some international experience. So I certainly expect him to start one of them, if not both of them. I mean, it is a training camp. It's great. It, Darren is going. Hopefully, he remains fit and able to go. And uh, if he's there, he'll, he'll be great for the two younger keepers. Um, but I don't expect him to start in either of the games, really, because they are. it is a summer training camp. There are, they are experiment. They are friendlies. They're a time to experiment. And it, Gavin Bazunu got some international experience in March. And I think it's a chance to give Cuevin Kelleher some international experience. On your point about West Ham getting into the Europa League, yeah, that's great news for us because it means a lot of extra matches for West Ham. And I imagine it means that Darren Randolph is going to get a lot of game time in the cup games, whether that's the Europa League as well, or at least some of them anyway. So I, I think it's got to be good news for us that West Ham have got more games because it means more game time for Darren. Yeah, I agree. And you know, you'd be hoping now that he will stay injury free because there was a period where he just couldn't get any injuries and now it's a case of he is getting injured. Maybe that's through lack of, you know, um playing games regularly enough because when he was in and playing regularly for Middlesbrough and stuff like that, he was he was top class and he was, you know, breaking records left, right and centre for them. Uh, I suppose in some ways it's been a shame that maybe he's been second fiddle, but I think he knew that going to West Ham. As far as Bazunu goes now, I think if he can get a um, show a little bit in this window or in this window sorry in these games I think it could be a good opportunity for him to get another maybe decent loan move because I don't see City selling him obviously he went to Rochdale on loan but they also extended his contract at the same time City did so it'll be interesting to see will he go out on loan again for off the back of this and it'll be interesting to see what happens with Kelleher because you know you can't always play second fiddle to Alison Becker as good as it is it, it, I'm sure it's brilliant being in and around 
the set up at Liverpool with you know um, the goalkeepers and Klopp and you're in the dressing room with champions he's won a Champions League he's won a league in and around that dressing room but at some stage he has to kind of look at maybe going somewhere and becoming the main man so this could be if he if he has a good little window here it could open a couple of doors for him maybe yeah I think Gavin Bazuna will definitely go on loan I, I don't see him next season becoming part of the the, the Manchester City set up or sitting on the bench for them uh, there's been two schools of thought on Cuevin Keller. I mean, he is at a, one of the top clubs in the world and he's around one of the best goalkeepers in the world. And he he can learn so much and being involved, the standards at Liverpool. And I, I said it was great West Ham qualified for the Europa League. I was actually a bit disappointed Liverpool didn't qualify for the Europa League because obviously they reached the Champions League, which is a lot better for Liverpool. But I think had they been in the Europa League, we may have seen more of Cuevin Kelleher next season. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's he is in a much better situation that he's that bit more advanced in his career than Gavin. And uh, Jurgen Klopp obviously rates him very highly. So if he's going to be number two and he can get some game time, I think there's a lot to be said for him remaining at Anfield. Yeah, I, I get that, but like in some cases, do you want to be the Irish number one? You have to be playing games. Uh, it's funny I say that, and then Randolph isn't playing games, but it, it's it's just it's a position that you need players playing. And of the three, not really you could say either any of them are first choice. No, well, none of them are. Well, yeah. okay, you can say Gavin down at Rochdale, but we've we've no we've no first choice keeper in the the top two divisions in England or in any of the major leagues that I can think of across Europe anyway. Um, so, yes, that is a concern. I mean, maybe if Cuevin Kelleher was to do maybe what Henderson did at Man United and go on loan to a, a Premier Division club, that that might help. But I certainly wouldn't like to see Cuevin Kelleher going down to League One or something like that. I think he has really impressed when he's got a chance for I mean he's played in the Champions League he's played in the Premier League for Liverpool and Alisson does get injured so I mean he could easily get 10 to 15 starts for Liverpool next season if he was to stay which would be absolutely phenomenal yeah well look it'll be interesting to say as I said if he gets a run in these games um you know that might help him throughout pre-season if the manager sees he can do it on the international stage that will help but look we'll move on to the defenders I suppose Coleman and Doherty are a given and then you've got Leo Connor, James McLean, Ryan Manning, Shane Duffy, Dara O'Shea, John Egan, and Andrew Amabamadile. So, um, oh, you know, when you saw the defenders in there, I suppose Leo Connor and uh, Amabamadile. Uh, first of all, were you shocked when you saw them? Because I, because I was being honest. I was, Paul. Yeah, I was. No, I was shocked, and then I thought about it, and I said, "Well, Andrew, um, I'll have to pronounce it, Amabamadile." has been superb. He's been absolutely superb and he's forced his way into the squad. And if you think about it, um, why not? Why not Stephen bring him in and, and, and get a look at him? Because uh, he, he's he's effectively made the starting place his own in the, the Norwich team that went on to win the championship. And hopefully he'll get a lot of game time in the Premier Division next season. Um, Leo Connor is, is is even a bigger surprise for me. Um, he is someone I'd actually seen at the under seventeens and even at the not under nineteens as well, and he looked really really impressive. He'd been at Manchester United, and I thought he was going to be close to make the breakthrough. And then he had the move to Celtic, and I said, okay, maybe it's just a good good to go to Celtic. But I expected him to challenge and to to possibly be in the first team there, and he didn't get anywhere near it, and that's. Well, he's gone on loan to Tranmere. Now, he has got game time with Tranmere, and uh, but it is in League Two. So I'm a bit surprised Stephen has picked him, but Stephen obviously likes him. He's really done He's done a job for the under-21s. I think he captained the under-21s at times. And uh, I, I imagine that's why Stephen picked him, because he knows what he can do and he can trust him. He's also an option in the holding role in midfield, not just as a, as a fullback. So that's where he played, actually, for the under-19s. So even though his career has maybe taken a little bit of a backward step in recent months, I, I still think there's a real player in there and uh, he can bounce back from this. And this is certainly going to help his confidence. I suppose then, if you want to say I was surprised, if you look at who's there, 
the one that's left left out, and I know it's one you you mentioned before, is Denny McNamara, who was playing in the championship with Millwall, and can probably feel a little bit unfortunate not to make the squad. But then, if you look at the fact that Seamus Coleman and Matt Doherty are both available, and that's pretty much Leo O'Connor's position as well, uh, something had to give. So um, he can maybe consider himself a little unfortunate. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe Leo O'Connor does suit the way Stephen wants to play more so. Well, I think with Lee as well, he also could play left back as well. So he covers a, new, a, lot, a lot of different positions. You know, I think that's what he brings. And also, I think he's he's played quite a bit for Tramir in midfield as well. So I think he does give that added option. Plus, I, I would say he's a massive fan of his. I think if Lee can... Again, another player like maybe Am Am of Amadelli and uh, Leo Connor and a couple of those. If they can get a good run of games and they look like they can, you know, do it at the standard of international football. I know Lee's done it already. He set up that goal for Callum Robinson in that game, and he looked really good against New Zealand when he did play. I really believe that uh, Leo Connor could go on to, you know, really good things at Celtic. I think going in this season now, if he can get a good preseason under his belt and um, try and make that right back spot his own, because. Anytime I've watched him, I've been impressed with him, whether that's the first team, the 21s, the 17s, or the 19s. I've always been impressed with him. And I just really would love to see him go on and, and just, you know, really kick on his career from here. He's still quite young. Like, you know, he was captain of the under-21s, as you said. So hopefully this is now going to be a breakthrough for him. Steven seems to really like him, seems to really trust in him. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. Obviously, I did a video with Andrew Oma of Amadelli last week. Um, that's if you haven't checked it out, it's on the channel there. If you want to check it out after this, but you know, I would say he was probably quite surprised at getting called up as well because he was talking to me, you know, about the twenty ones and stuff like that. But look, I'm I'm absolutely delighted. I, like people are going, oh, it's the worst squad we've had in years. But at the same time, we've never had this much youth in the squad. This these friendlies, I, I'm not going to say they don't mean anything because I think Stephen needs to get a win. He kind of bypassed that question when he was asked in his press conference as well. Um, I think he needs to get a win and a couple of goals in these games, whether it's just beat Andorra and get a decent result against Hungary. But we just need something to kind of get a bit of confidence going and hopefully the, some of the young lads come in and do well, especially in defence. I mean, like if you look at it, it's a really good blend of uh, youth and experience. I'm just going to pull it up again for people. So, yeah, you've got Coleman, Doherty, Leo Connor, James McLean, Ryan Manning, Shane Duffy, Daryl O'Shea, John Egan and Andrew Oma Bamadile. So... You know, you mentioned a couple of players had been, uh, you know, suffering throughout the season, like Ender Stevens and stuff like that. So he just basically gave him a break. Um, he knows what Ender can bring to the table. So he mentioned that in his press conference as well. So there was that. I imagine that was the case for some of the midfield as well. But look, it's nice to have, like, I know Seamus Coleman missed the last game of the season against Man City, but he's obviously not that bad if he's been called up. I'm sure Stephen would have had a word before he called him up to see. Um, and it's great to see that he's going to still come in and, you know, I suppose actively engage with the squad so it shows that a lot of them still show how much it means from Shane Duffy coming straight back in he's another one who probably wants to hit the ground running in course for next season you know because he's had such a bad season he's came back early to Brighton he's got stuck back in with the gym he's you know been he seems to be really enjoying himself back at Brighton from what I've seen on social media again you can't really tell but he just looks um, to be enjoying himself back at training, he's smiling, laughing, putting up pictures. You know, Brighton are putting up stuff about him as well. So it looks like you know it's it's quite happy place for them at the moment. So um, it's good to see players like that. You know, these are captain material and have captained the country before. So it's good to see them in there. Ryan Manning will be looking to really cement that left back spot, I think, as well. So look, we've got good options there. It looks like McLean will probably be used as a left back or a left wing back as well because he's under the def defenders, but we'll wait and see. But I suppose um, just we'll move it on to midfield there because I don't think you really need to go into detail on the players that I just mentioned there. I, I, I'd be fairly certain you agree with what I said about them. Um, but just on the midfield, uh, so you got Josh Cullen, Connor Herrohan, Harry Arthur, Jason Knight, Jason Malumbi, Jamie McGrath and Dan Mandreo. Your thoughts on the midfielders, Gary? Yeah, so this is, uh, well, the, the one surprise that stood out for me was Dan Mandreo. But then when I thought about it again, he's probably been the standout player for Shamrock Rovers this season. And it is great that there's somebody from the SSE or Tristity League in the squad. And that's good to see. And it's good to see that Stephen is taking note of how players are performing. And the other thing Danny brings is just that bit of an X factor, that little 
bit of skill. He can pull something out of nothing. And I suppose if there's something's been lacking, obviously it's been our creativity, it's our goal scoring. So uh, then he can make a difference there. And I'm sure we will get a look at him over the two games. And certainly Stephen will want to get a look at him in camp. Um, I'm a bit surprised at some of the midfielders. I'm surprised the likes of Harry Arter, for example, and even Conor Horahan as well, playing in the playoffs as well, because he's going to effectively go from the playoff the playoff final uh, straight to the the camp. And it's, it's going to be a, a long two weeks. I wasn't surprised, if you go back, that some of the senior players, like Enda Stevens, they, they needed a break. And I think, as you say, Stephen knows what he can do. I imagine that's the same with the likes of Jeff Hendrick as well. That they're just given a break, Probably or Clark gotten, as well. Yeah, and Kieran Clark exactly. They may have niggly injuries, etc. They've had a tough season, and uh, so it's no surprise they're given a break. Um, Connor Horahan is the one, but he's obviously very keen to play because it is a big ask on these players to go for another two weeks, and it will be pretty intensive, I imagine. So. The, the, that's probably my thoughts on that. and uh, But, of course, the big one, and the big one for me, and I'm delighted he's in it, is Jamie McGrath, because uh, he's been getting rave reviews in Scotland. Now, I must admit, it took me a while to actually watch, sit down and watch him in St. Mirren, but he, he's playing really well. He's, he's creating chances. He's scoring goals. And uh, Stephen obviously knows what he can do from his time at Dundalk anyway. And, uh, but he looks like he's really kicked on in Scotland as well. And uh, I, I'm delighted. I, I, he's not a surprise for me. I think it had been flagged or he'd been talked about. So I am delighted he's in the squad. And I think we'll we'll definitely get a look at him. Yeah, well, I just think, you know, the likes of McGrath and Mandreo, what they do is they bring another element to our set pieces as well because the two of them can deliver balls. McGrath whipped in a brilliant ball for St. Mirren at the weekend there for Conor McCarthy to score. Um, they were 2-0 down at that stage, but still it was a great ball in, and he obviously scores goals as well, so he brings that to the table. Mandreo brings goals to the table. What I like is that there's players there that can score goals and assist goals and are creative, um, which is what we've kind of lacked. You kind of feel sorry for players like Aaron McInniff, but you'd like to think that his time will come in the future. Uh, and, and then maybe players like um, Anthony Scully at, at Lincoln as well, which I know will come to the forwards and stuff like that. But I know you had said you were surprised he, he'd missed out on the squad because he had a good season. Um, I had done a video previously that I thought a couple of players like Shadipo and Scully and a couple of others should have got into the team. I think only one of them was McGrath, the only one who got in. But look, justifiably so, Jamie McGrath, he probably should have been in the March squad in my opinion. But maybe it was just a too big of a of an ask because it was coming into a a competitive game. Whereas now he can actually get a closer look of how much Jamie McGrath has gone up in level since he's left him at Dundalk. So it'll be interesting to see how he how he gets in with the squad and how he gets on because I definitely think Jamie McGrath is right up there. And again, I think he'll be someone who'll be on course for a move somewhere this summer too. Um, and it would be interesting to see what fee he goes for if he does go. But I'd I'd be fairly certain he will go and as far as Mandreo goes he's going into a squad where his mates are there you know he's got Jason Malumbi he's got Dara O'Shea he's got Leo Connor he's got Aaron Connolly he's played with Malumbi and Connolly at Brighton and he probably knows Shane Duffy from his time there so he won't be going in you know saying oh my god I'm going with the Irish squad I think he'll be going in like looking to enjoy it like he's enjoyed his football shamrock over so far this season I noticed in the comments already people are calling him a rat they're obviously Bose fans in the in the comments saying whatever about him but listen I think the more quality we have you know he's he's a really really good player I, I've seen videos and, and um, players have said so many good things about Dan Mandrell's technical ability. I know Aaron Connolly really says, I think he said he's the best feat of any player he's ever played with. So I think that's, and he's played with some good players as well. I think Malumbi said very good things about him as well. So I, I'd be very excited to see what Mandrell can do in an Ireland jersey with, I suppose, the senior players around him as well. I know he didn't really play much um, in the 21 setup, but he looks like a lot more of a mature man now than he was then. And he just seems to be really enjoying his football and it's not really like forced. He just seems to be just really enjoying it. Obviously, scoring last minute winners helps uh, things. But like he has had a really good start to the season so far for Shamrock Rovers. And I'm delighted for Jamie McGrath personally because obviously I did a video with him there around March or just before March. And 
he he you could see he was kind of playing it down but you could see it, it means the world to him to play for Ireland I was talking to him earlier on and he was buzzing so I'm really really happy for him you've got Malumbi back in there as well again he'd be someone who'd be looking to impress I think in regards to when he gets back to Brighton is he going to go is he going to leave permanently this time around because the loan move didn't work out for him he stayed at Brighton to try and fight for his place and it didn't work out so what's going to happen there because I think Basuma um, is, is going to be moving on will he get in there or will he be second choice again will they buy again with the money they maybe get for Basuma so there's all these things I think for, for a lot of the players they kind of have to look at that and be like right I need to get in here and I need to press for my country and if I can press for my country it might spark a move I think Howard's probably thinking that I think Arthur's probably thinking that as well and I think Malumbi's probably thinking that as far as McGrath and Mandreo, they look like they're enjoying their football. I don't think they're going to be playing for moves. I think if, if anyone's going to come for them, they'll come for them. But uh, just on Harry Arthur, just to finish on the midfielders before we move on to the forwards, um, were you surprised at him getting called in here? I was, Paul. Yeah, I, 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 it was a name. I said, oh, I've forgotten about Harry Arthur. And even from the fact that I think Stephen knows what he can do to an extent that... Um, is he somebody that he, he wanted to get a look at? But look, I, I hope he shows up and I hope he impresses because it gives us another option. And uh, in some ways, he he maybe had become a bit of a forgotten man. And uh, another name I had heard was James McCarthy, but I'm not so surprised with James because he has been, look, he's been nursing a few injuries this Steve season. I think he needs well. a rest. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, he basically said that. Yeah. Yeah, so I think he needs a rest. So, and, and the one thing I would say, and I mean, maybe I should have said it back in the defenders as well, is it, it will be good to get a, a balance of experienced players and then a few young players thrown in with that because you don't want to, to, to send this squad off in a training camp and it's basically all young players and uh, they're all trying to play together. If you play some of the experienced players and then you play some of the younger players beside them, it it it's probably a better way to to help bring them on, etc. So um, maybe if Jamie McGrath plays in the midfield with the likes of of, of Conor Horahan, and uh, well maybe Harry Arthur, Jason Malumbi, Josh Cullen, etc. But maybe just to bring one of Jamie McGrath, or Danny Mandreo in. Um, likewise at the back, if you're going to play Andrew. Um, Andrew Omo Bambadeli, then you play him maybe beside the likes of John Egan or something like that. But, um, we, well, it, it's obviously Stephen's choice, and uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what team he picks. Maybe he doesn't, he hasn't got set ideas on this as well, because they will be training together for about a week, I believe, before they even get to play Andorra. So I think Stephen will have a very close eye on what's going on in camp. And maybe we'll see, uh, and maybe we'll get a big surprise in the the lineup he names for the two friendlies. Then, yeah. Well, I think we'll we'll just we'll go through the forwards. These are classed as wingers as well. So whatever way you want to look at it. So you've got Callum Robinson, James Collins, Adam Ida, uh, or Ida, sorry, Adam Ida, uh, Aaron Connolly, Troy Parrish, Chia Daisy Ogbeni, um, Ronan Curtis, and Daryl Horgan. Um, I suppose looking at that, like I don't know, I don't understand why Daryl Horgan gets in here. Um, you know when you when you think of like someone like Scully or Shadipo who's actually been doing it, whereas I don't really think Horgan's been doing it. Um, Ronan Curtis, I understand. Ogbeni, uh, I know he's been a big fan of his. He's been injured for a lot of the season, but he's probably just getting him in to have a look at him. I know he's had a look at Daryl Horgan and he's had him at Dundalk, so he knows what he can kind of bring. As far as the other strikers, I'm not really surprised. Tro uh, Troy. Paris, Aaron Connolly, Adam Ida, James Collins and Callum Robinson would probably be there anyway, in my opinion. So um, I'll bring it over to you and kind of get your thoughts on the forwards. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I know Dozie Ogbeni actually because he, he played at Limerick and uh, he was an absolute star uh, before he went cross-channel. Now, he has been unfortunate with injuries, but he did come back towards the end of the season. But it's probably... I don't think too many at Rotherham really even have been expecting him to to make the international squad. I'm delighted for him because if you can get him fully fit, he has bags of talent, he's paced the burn, and uh, he can be a goal threat on the wing as well. So uh, I'm delighted for him because he's an absolutely lovely lad and 
He was fantastic when he was at Limerick. And I know he was he's um, originally from Cork and played for Cork City for a while as well. So I really wish him all the best. And I'd love to see him uh, get a chance in in one of the two games. So, but I, I must admit, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised, and if not shocked, that he did make the squad. Um, Daryl Horgan, maybe not so much because Stephen knows him so well. He signed him; he knows what he can do. So um, that probably worked in his favour, uh, rather than some of the players you mentioned. I was expecting Tony Scully to make the squad, though I really was, and uh, he's probably the one I'm a, a little bit um, disappointed that didn't make it. Um, the others, as you mentioned, if they're fit and they're available and they want to come, then obviously they're going to get picked. Just one uh, notable um, omission is uh, Shane Long, but I imagine that's again another player who's probably going to go out and just have a holiday or whatever. You know, I know Collins has just signed with Cardiff, which is a good move for him because we want him playing, I suppose, as high up. I don't think he's going to be a Premier League striker anytime soon, but I think what he gives you is he's physical, he's a powerhouse, and he scores goals, all different types of goals. Um, so he's a he's a threat to the opposition always, whereas I think, you know, Long, we know what he can do, and he probably just needs a holiday. He's had a bad season. It hasn't been it hasn't been good. Um, and if you're going off form as well, he probably doesn't deserve to be there. Other people... That probably are notable omissions as well. Ob uh, Obafemi, sorry again, but he probably wanted to go on holidays. Um, I don't know. Again, uh, I so I don't know. I don't know about Michael Obafemi now. I think that's uh, Shane Long. Definitely. Look, any of the experienced players. I'm not going to read too much into them not being in the squad. Okay, they've had long, hard seasons. Okay, Shane Long hasn't played that much, but Stephen knows what he can do. So I wouldn't read too much into Shane Long not being in the squad. Michael Obafemi has not played very much and he had been kind of out of favour uh, at Southampton and everything. So uh, it sounds to me like he wasn't actually chosen or else maybe there's some injury issues or something because he hasn't had a lot of game time. Uh, he is somebody I would imagine Stephen would have wanted to have uh, had a look at um, and this would have been an ideal opportunity for him to shine. So... I would be more concerned that that maybe he decided Michael Obafemi is not the type of player he wants at the moment. Maybe he just doesn't fit into the system or something like that. I'd be less concerned about Shane Long, but that's that's just me guessing, really. Yeah, but all, all I'm saying is, um, you know, I, I just don't see where Michael Obafemi gets into this team anyway. Because if I look at the players who I don't know, look, Obafemi is probably the one, other than Connolly, is probably playing at the Premier League. Um, more often than anyone, even though he makes just a lot of substitute appearances for the last few minutes in games. But he's still playing in the Premier League in comparison to Troy, um, you know, Callum Robinson. I know he's going to be down in the Championship unless he gets to move. But uh, James Collins, so he, you know, he's playing at a higher level than a lot of these. And this would have been an ideal opportunity maybe to get him in and see if he could play off them. But again, we don't know. Stephen could have sent out a message and seen who was interested and who just wanted to kind of get away. You know, you'd imagine someone like Obafemi who spent the most of the season injured would want to come in and do a job. So I suppose I didn't get a chance to ask him a question in the press conference earlier. So um, I was kind of going to ask him some stuff like that. But look, uh, another one would have been Mipo Odebeko. You know, what's going on with him? Will he be in the 21 squad in the morning? What's going on there? So it was just nice to put a bit of clarity on this and just kind of know what the story is but look i'm happy enough with the squad it's some new faces it's uh it's something different hey you know i think if we come out of this with uh two wins or well, i'm gonna say two wins being optimistic but um if we came out of this with two wins and a couple of goals scored i think everybody will get a boost and i've been saying this for the last probably three international windows but i think we really do need a win and we really do need to score a couple of goals. And how nice would it be to see, I don't know, someone like maybe Omar Bamadeli pop up with a with a nice goal from a corner or something like that and we win the game or a couple of goals like that. You know, that'd be nice. Or Troy getting off the mark or Aaron probably getting his first goal. It'd be nice to get him off the mark as well. So, look, I, I'm looking forward to it. I know you're going to the games, but you must be buzzing to, you know, to get to see some of them making their first game or making their debuts, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I will go back two years uh, two years ago because uh, Stephen had the under-21s and he went to Toulon. And in many ways, that was the making of his 
under 21 management career because they, they had a really good tournament. They got to the semi finals and uh, they really kicked on in qualifying after that. And this is his first real chance now to get a squad away. Now, two weeks is a long time. So he'll have them away for two weeks. Uh, he'll have over a week working with them before they even play a game. And uh, it will be interesting to see how it goes. I, I I don't know what's going to happen, what sort of a lineup we're going to see against Andorra. I think we will definitely beat Andorra. I wouldn't have any concerns there. Um, I, I think you're... I think you're being incredibly optimistic if you think we can go to, to Budapest and uh, and beat Hungary. Um, in fact, Budapest is actually going to have a full house as well, or, well, uh, potentially a full house for that game because it's been played in front of fans, which, uh, which would be pretty incredible given the year and a bit we've gone through on that. But um, it, it will be interesting to see how the players react as well. I know some of them have played in, in front of fans, only but only recently, and only small attendances in the UK. So um, I think beating a Hungarian side that's getting ready for the Euros would be a real statement of intent. I, I'm not sure that we're up to that level yet, but it would be interesting to see. Yeah, well, I suppose just one last look at the squad before we finish up. So, yeah, uh, Randolph, Kelleher, Bazunu and Goals, Coleman, Doherty, Leo Connor, James McLean, Ryan Manning, Shane Duffy, Darrow O'Shea, John Egan, Andrew Omobamadile, and then midfield, uh, Josh Cullen, Connor Herrohan, Ar- Harry Arthur, Jason Knight, Jason Malumby, Jamie McGrath from St. Mirren. Uh, Dam Andreo, Shamrock Rovers, and then forwards, Callum Robinson, James Collins, Adam Ida, Aaron Connolly, Troy Parrish, Odaisy Ogbonne, and uh, Ronan Curtis, and then lastly, Daryl Horgan. So that's the squad for people who maybe just joined us. Um, a couple of people in the comments there um, saying hello from Canada. How are you guys? Thanks for tuning in. But yeah, I think we'll leave it at that, Gary. I think we've covered all the positions um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see who's in the twenty one squad tomorrow uh, morning. That's going to be announced in the morning. Yeah, there's a press conference with Jim Crawford at half nine in the morning. So it it should be interesting to see who's in that squad as well. And if there's anyone that uh you know that could have been in the senior squad, maybe in that squad too. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, we could have a couple of injuries as well, or things happen and players could could move up from the under 21s as well it it may not be suit jim crawford i'll admit that but um it will be handy for Stephen to know that the under 21s are in spain in, albeit in a totally different part of the country but they're there at the same time so if he did need to call on somebody it wouldn't be that difficult yeah well i suppose we leave it at that huge thanks to anyone who joined in in the comments and uh, don't forget to like the video please don't forget to subscribe we did reach ten thousand subscribers but now we're going to re- try and reach for 20,000 so uh, don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe we'll speak to you all soon thanks for watching